Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! The Vice President of the United States is famously said to be one heartbeat away from the presidency. Its primary role now seems to be to soothe the racing pulses of America's allies. Mike Pence arrived in Brussels today like a diplomatic defibrillator on a mission to calm the nerves of European allies, worried by the pro-Brexit remarks made by his boss, Donald Trump. Pr President Trump, meanwhile, continued his diplomacy on Twitter, where he remains embroiled in a row over immigration and supposed terrorism in Sweden. In Westminster, MPs have been debating President Trump's state visit amid widespread protest. Our political editor, Gary Gibbon, joins us with the latest. Gary. Well, two pretty eye-catching debates going on in Parliament tonight, uh, and it's quite possible that neither of them will actually change anything. Just down the corridor, we're going to talk about this a bit later, uh, the Lords have started their look at the bill that triggers Brexit, and just over in a committee room, the other side of the House, uh, MPs are finishing off their uh, debate now. It's a debate with no vote, uh, triggered by the petition that happened over President Trump's uh, state visit and whether that should go ahead. Uh, fact is, I think, that uh, nothing is really going to be changed by that debate. The strength of the opposition on display in that room with MPs and in demonstrations around the country uh, today might change the itinerary of President Trump's visit. Uh, there's already talk that they're going to try and keep him away from uh, crowds. Uh, I've heard today there's talk that he actually has expressed an interest or his team has in him going to see the Churchill War Rooms. They'll keep crowds safely away from that if it happens, I'm sure. But they're not going to change the reality of the visit. The only thing that's going to change that, the government are adamant it's going to go ahead, is if President Trump himself pulls out. Here's how that parliamentary moment today went. The petition to rip up the state visit invitation to Donald Trump quickly tripped over the 100,000 signatures that can trigger a debate. Eventually, it reached 1.8 million. That today gave MP critics of the US president the chance to let rip with their feelings. People are offended and concerned that Britain should abandon all its principles and afford this man a state visit after seven days. Really? And why? Because this great country is so desperate for a trade deal that we would throw all of our own history out the, out the window? To actually put yourself in that weak negotiating position and then to advertise it so blatantly to President Trump, uh, as the Prime Minister uh, managed to do, uh, is a, a recipe for total and utter disaster. From my experience, with negotiating from Donald Trump, let me tell the Honourable Member, never ever do it from a weak position. Supporters of a state visit by President Trump got their own much smaller petition going and attacked those who wanted to cancel the invitation. He is definitively different. And in an exercise of pressing the right buttons to engage him, I think dangling a state visit in front of a half Scottish president of the United States, whose mother had an immense attachment to the country, was a very successful use, was a very successful use of the kind of soft power that the, that the United Kingdom has. Xi Jinping was here uh, last year. Where were the demonstrations then? How many, votes did, how many votes did Xi Jinping get? How many votes? We had a state visit from a Chinese leader 10 years after Tiananmen Square. The Speaker of the Commons, who accompanied China's President on his trip to address Parliament, has said President Trump must not be given the same honour. Though it's far from clear such an address was ever going to be part of the US President's itinerary. Vital sources said President Trump's likely to avoid a canter down the mall in an open carriage, and like President George W. Bush, probably stay inside his eight-ton car. The US Vice President's convoy has been snaking through the streets of Brussels for two days. Today, he met the European Council President, Donald Tusk, who tried to pin down Vice President Pence on whether President Trump supported international order, NATO promises and the European Union, which he's previously suggested should be broken up. I heard today from Vice President Pence three times, yes. After such a positive declaration, both Europeans and Americans must 
simply practice what they preach. You look at what's happening last night in Sweden. Sweden. Who would believe this? Sweden. They took in large numbers. They're having problems like they never thought possible. At the weekend, President Trump was talking Europe to supporters in the U.S. In a tweet yesterday, he said he'd learned about the attacks from Fox News. Perhaps no nation on earth is more committed to accepting foreign migrants and refugees than Sweden. There was an absolute surge in, in both gun violence and rape in Sweden once yes. they began this open-door policy. This morning, after being criticized for factual inaccuracy, the president accused the fake news media of trying to say that large-scale immigration in Sweden is working out just beautifully. Not. We are used to see the U.S. president as perhaps the single most well-informed person in the world. And suddenly we find that he is among the least well-informed persons in the world. And the words coming from the U.S. president are important. We expect it to be based on facts. This was fake news from the president of the United States. Tonight, demonstrators gathered in Parliament Square. There were also anti-Trump protests in Cambridge, Newcastle, Manchester and Cardiff. Their banners will probably get another outing. As the government insists, it's not budging and the state visit will go ahead. Well, our correspondent, Kamian Zerum, is down amongst the protesters outside Parliament right now. Uh, what's happening out there, uh, Kamian? John, I'm not sure if you can hear, but the crowd is currently being encouraged to take part in a mass rendition of the Labi Sifri anti-apartheid and gay rights anthem, Something Inside So Strong. There's about, I don't know, six, 7,000 people here, very uh, calm, very peaceful, and they've been uh, treated to speeches from a collection of radical left and left-leaning leaders, Diane Abbott, the Shadow Home Secretary, saying that a state uh, visit, an official state visit, is typically something that should be accorded a, a politician of particular high stature, like Nelson Mandela, for example. Uh, Rushanara Ali, the Labour MP for Bethnal Green and Bowes, said that she spoke for the handful of Muslim MPs who were, quite frankly, terrified about Donald Trump's policies. Now, is any of this going to make any difference? Well, of course, the government has said it will go ahead. But every now and then you hear the crowd say, dump Trump or Trump out. They are upset and they will continue to be upset, they say, because Trump, they say, is racist. Trump, they say, is a misogynist. And Trump, they say, just can't be trusted. Have a listen. Well, he hates queer people and Iraqis, and I'm both in one. So I feel like a double homicide on me by Trump. Um, and I also just think May's sort of condoning of his behavior is kind of apologizing with that sort of behavior here. He was never going to be my president, so not my president became not my clown. Um, I think he is a clown and a dangerous one. Um, too much of a clown, even for clowns like me. A sort of protesters talking to Kamian Zerum there. Well, Donald Trump's personal lawyer has dismissed as fake news reports that he's involved in a secret peace plan to resolve the Russia-Ukraine conflict. But it's just one of a series of claims linking members of the Trump administration to Moscow. Allegations which refuse to go away, as our foreign affairs correspondent Jonathan Rugman now reports. Another day, another claim that President Trump is too close to the Russians for America's own good. Today's New York Times is reporting that the president's personal lawyer gave his national security adviser a plan to lift sanctions on Russia, a claim that lawyer now denies. The national security adviser, General Flynn, resigned last week after he was caught lying about his own discussions with the Russian ambassador about sanctions. And Mr Trump is constantly on the defensive about how deep and healthy his Kremlin connections are. And by the way, it would be great if we could get along with Russia, just so you understand that. Now, tomorrow you'll say, Donald Trump wants to get along with Russia. This is terrible. It's not terrible. It's good. U.S. intelligence claims Russia mounted a covert hacking operation to undermine Hillary Clinton's election campaign. Though so far, there's no suggestion the Trump team colluded with the Russians on that. It was reported last week that the National Security Agency intercepted calls between Paul Manafort, Trump's former campaign chairman, and Russian intelligence. Though Manafort has dismissed such contact as absurd, ties between the Trump circle and Moscow are now being investigated by Congress, by America's spies, and by the FBI. One in that circle was Carter Page, briefly a campaign foreign policy advisor and now reportedly part of the FBI's inquiry. 
The explosive but unverified Trump dossier compiled by an ex-MI6 officer alleges Page secretly met two senior officials in Moscow, Igor Sechin, chairman of Russia's biggest oil producer Rosneft, and Igor Divyakin, a senior official in the Kremlin. The dossier claims Sechin offered Page a large stake in Rosneft in return for lifting sanctions on Russia. Mr Divyakin is alleged to have talked to Mr Page about compromising material on Hillary Clinton and its possible release to the Republicans. That's Donald Trump's campaign team. Carter Page was certainly in Moscow last July giving this speech. Washington and other Western capitals have impeded potential progress but he too has denied any improper meetings with Russian officials. By last September, Trump's advisers were dismissing Page as irrelevant. So if he's out there talking to Russian officials, he's not doing so on behalf of the Trump campaign in any way, shape or form. He's certainly not authorized to do that. But if he is still under investigation, then why? Was Page a secret and unofficial conduit for Russian influence? Or is all this a smear campaign dreamt up by President Trump's enemies, as Page now claims. Jonathan Rugman reporting. Well, Carter Page, the former foreign policy advisor to the Trump campaign, joins us now. And let me ask you, first of all, are you under investigation by either the law enforcement or intelligence agencies of the United States? Uh, that's exactly as we discussed last year. No one from the FBI has ever contacted me. It's all a complete sham investigation, just played up by the opponents of Mr. Trump. But you did tell the New York Times that you are under investigation. I never said anywhere. I said actually... Well, they actually uh, put it to you that you are uh, under investigation. Yeah, that's various <laughs> leaks by people internally in the deep state that are pushing against Mr. Trump. What is Trump. deep state? It is... Uh, it, that's a long discussion, but there are... Basically, you, know, you feel that as a section of the United States administration that's against you? Not administration. I just say, you know, people within the government that are Intelligence holdovers. Officers? Well, I think, you know, the, the, best ex the best example I can give you is Sally Yates, you know, the person who was uh, pushing back the uh, temporary acting at attorney general. And, you know, I think uh, if I had to guess, you know, she was certainly part of some of the attacks against um, General Flynn. And I wouldn't so be surprised. So you regret the passing of General Flynn? Absolutely. He was great. straight as a die. He is a individual of great integrity. And I think, you know, if you're working... You know the mystery? No, nobody's been able to work out why on earth he's gone. Well, listen, if you're working... He lied to the vice president. If you're working 18-hour days and, you know, you're... He you lied have, to the vice president. I was Lying's not part of his... Uh, I was not And you're, part you're of not telling me any lies about agencies inspecting your background. They may very well be. Actually, I, I expect they are if you listen to some of these news reports. So, so uh, let's just get to the sort of essence of all this. And, and some of it has to do with the, uh, the sale of the oil company, Rosenfeld, uh, Rosneft's uh, actual, uh, uh, you know, value to Glencore. Yeah. I think it was about $11 billion. Mm -hmm. And it is said that you may have taken a commission or you might get a commission. The interesting thing about Glencore, if you look at the history of that company, that was actually founded by Mark Rich, the person that Bill Clinton uh, pardoned in his mm -hmm. final days in office, very controversially. So I have no contacts at uh, Glencore. So you've never but had Mr. anything Clinton to do with either of them? You've never had anything to do with either the oil company or, or with Glencore? I know some people at Rosneft. It's the largest oil company in Russia. So Did you no, have anything to do with the takeover? I, absolutely zero. Zero. So that there is no truth in the suggestion that you might well profit from that in return for delivering better relations between Russia and the United States. It's a great stunt, also known as a red herring tactic that the Clinton well, campaign. Well, uh, let, let's get it on the record. Have you ever met uh, Igor Sechin and uh, Tugo, uh, Igor Igor Devenkin? Uh, he um, was mentioned both when mentioned in Rugman's report. Yeah, no, it, totally false. And not only that, you know. I keep getting, uh, when I was he arrived here over the weekend, a, a family that I was uh, visiting, one of their young kids asked me, why are you always on TV? I saw you on young on TV. And I, I said, don't worry, you know, your future I'm is going to be safe. I'm just denying stories about me and the <laughs> Russians. Because this <laughs> it's, is it's, the... all, it's all a red herring. Yeah, but, 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 but this is the madness of all this. Because it is madness, Because you were absolutely. a foreign policy 
adviser to Mr Trump, I and was... one presumes it was your life in Moscow that recommended you for that job. I, w I was working... Uh, that's totally false. Were um, you one of Mr Trump's foreign policy advisers? I was part of a foreign policy team that was the well, supporting Well, let, let's him. hear it yeah. from Mr Trump's own lips. There were five of you. He named you, right? He, you may never have met him. You may not have spent any time with him, which is what your claim is, but you were named by him. So he knows of your existence. Certainly. And he knows you were one of his foreign policy advisers. He knows of my existence because he's constantly being harassed at that no, no, uh, no, hour no, plus, Hang on uh, a minute. Hang on a minute. That's a long time conference. ago that he stated that you were. He told the board, the editorial board of the Washington Post, that you were one of his five advisers. And that was in March 2016, yeah. not a very long time ago. And that's exactly why... You must you know, have been fairly key for one like Donald Trump, who has an attention span of two and a half minutes, uh, to have remembered your name he's I, he remembers my name because there are front page articles on the New York yeah. Times therefore and all you the other were newspapers. an advisor right agreed I were you an advisor the, I was part of the team yeah hey, were you an advisor that's what I, I never spent know. any direct time I spent many hours in rallies with him with people yeah yeah but but you worked excited. on stuff for the Trump campaign on foreign policy correct certainly yes yeah. and was any of that to do with Russia nothing material you know, and this is, you know, all so, material. So what qualified you to be a foreign policy advisor if it had nothing to do with Russia, a country in which you had lived for several years, many years? I've worked on foreign policy issues, energy issues, trade issues, done tens of billions of dollars of transactions uh, globally. Mm. And so, and I was... Yeah. Uh, but what I'm trying to get at, tanks, how can yes. you be a foreign policy advisor if the one area which is your expertise, Russia, isn't part of the deal. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting. All the questions are always uh, asked, focused on Russia. I've, but is it surprising you worked for Africa. Merrill Lynch there? Yeah, you were yeah. there for a long time. Yeah. You had lots of good friends in Russia, lots Certainly. of good friends in the system. But you're telling me none of that was ever drawn upon by Mr. Trump. That was completely, you know, a, a big distraction just to... Uh, yes, I know a lot of people, but I know a lot of people in China, in Africa in Middle East, So you are completely yeah. innocent as not charged? I... This is a complete smear campaign. Every, every uh, point in that uh, dossier, the dodgy dossier, was completely false. Let me ask you one thing. You're here in London, you're a Trump faithful, whether you're still with him or not, doesn't really matter. Not a bit. What do you make of, of, of the revulsion that some of his comments have caused in this country and many other countries around the world, not least? Sweden. I was so many ambassadors that I met in Cleveland from around the world uh, at the Republican National Convention always started asking yeah, but very none of tough that, questions. None of that's happened since he was president. But they were talking a lot president. of the, but they were talking about a lot of the same false accusations and misrepresentations. And a lot of that goes back to the fake news issue. Well, you know, the, the fake news issue is something we've dealt a lot with, but thank you very Certainly. much for coming in Thanks, to a factual Tom. news. Thank you very Great much. Great to appreciate it. Thank you. With the offer of a state visit already made, something pretty seismic would have to happen for President Trump to be uninvited. I mean, you never know these days, but it's not a very likely outcome. That hasn't stopped protesters around the country and politicians in Parliament from trying to get it cancelled this evening. The arguments got pretty heated, in fact. A petulant child was one of the gentler criticisms of Mr Trump. But there were also plenty of MPs who urged colleagues to get a sense of perspective and insisted that the visit should go ahead, ahead and would indeed be beneficial for both Britain and America. A glowering Churchill, inventor of the phrase, the special relationship to describe the close bond between Britain and America. Too close for comfort right now, shout these protesters outside Parliament, furious that Theresa May has invited Donald Trump on a state visit. The chances are she's not going to change her mind. So some people would say, what's the point of turning up today? Trump hates people that look like me, and he wants to get rid of people that look like me, and I, I hate the fact that our government and our unelected pr prime minister is going along with him. I went on the anti-Iraq march in 2003. And we didn't persuade Tony Blair, but that doesn't mean you haven't got to try, does it? I am a black woman who has faced racism, and I want to make sure that we are standing in solidarity against Donald Trump and all that he represents.
From the boisterous court of public opinion to well a room in Parliament we rarely see. And a debate by MPs prompted by the 1.85 million people who signed a petition saying that Donald Trump coming here would embarrass Her Majesty. At the very least, it would have been prudent to wait before rolling out the royal red carpet, pimping out the Queen for the Donald Trump. Uh, Mr Walker, I don't think it's in order to refer to pimping out our sovereign, even yeah. if quoting some however distinguished journalist. Yeah. And for another senior Tory, the importance of binding Trump close is, and this may not be reassuring to everyone, to prevent World War III. If you knew that it would make a significant difference to bringing him on side to continue with the policies that prevented a conflagration on that scale, do you really think that it is more important to berate him, castigate him, rather than to do what the Prime Minister did, perhaps more literally than any of us expected, which is to take him by the hand as a Muslim in this house, I am not an enemy to Western democracy. Yeah. By allowing Donald Trump a state visit and bringing out the crockery, the china, the red carpet, what we are doing is endorsing all those views, all those things that I fought hard against and saying, do you know what? It's OK. And genuinely not as a joke. I, mean, I would invite Vladimir Putin for a state visit. If people from the Trump administration are listening, this is not fake news. The people who are protesting outside, these are not alternative facts. Newcastle. We stand together. Manchester. Cardiff. So few people here think there's any chance that Theresa May will change her mind and disinvite Donald Trump. So what we're really seeing is a taste of things to come, the kind of protests against the American president that are likely to greet him when he does arrive. Their recent experience says he'll see gatherings like this one as outpourings of love and that anyone saying otherwise is an enemy of the people. Well, indeed. Uh, Robert is here to discuss uh, being an enemy of the people and other matters uh, of our time. Um, look, let's just start at the beginning. Presumably there's no possibility this will be cancelled. And do you have any sense of when it might come? I mean, I can't genuinely think of the circumstances in which she would withdraw the invitation, given, you know, she invited him with her eyes open. He wasn't exactly an uncontroversial candidate to be yeah, yeah. Uh, president of the United States. Uh, that said, I mean, I have to say there is a little bit of regret around the Cabinet at the haste. Uh, it's probably worth remembering that during the Queen's reign, only two US presidents have been invited over for state visits, formal state visits, and they were both invited after three years. This mm. bloke was invited over after, literally after a matter of, of days. Um, because there is this embarrassment mm. over a majority of MPs and indeed the Speaker of the House of Commons not wanting him to speak in Parliament, the latest indications are that he's likely to come over when Parliament is not sitting, so that would sort of suggest late July, August, September, something like that? Like that. I mean, y you say there's some cabinet regret. Does that extend into number 10 at all for the, for, the, for the speed of it, do you think? And when she watches, you know, like the press conference last week, for example, or just generally the first kind of, you know, three weeks in office, do you think it's all going well for him? I think there is a major tricky question. Well, yeah. I think there is... Look, I mean, I have spoken to people mm. close to the Prime Minister about this... And, of course, they acknowledge that some of the things that he says are bonkers. I mean, you know, that statement about how he had got more votes in the Electoral College than any president since Reagan, mm. just totally untrue. Unfortunately, not true, but apart <laughs> and, from and, that, you know, yeah. and, and, you know, and, I mean, just the number of extraordinary things that he says mm -hmm. is, of course, jaw-dropping to them as it is to us. But, um, as, as we heard from the senior Tory, mm. Julian Lewis, in my little piece, mm. my little film, you know, their view is basically, if he's flaky, better to be our flake than an isolated flake <laughs> and therefore bind him in, um, in the hope that, you know, he recognises that NATO is in their interest and in our interest and that, you know, not going too far down the road to protectionism, um, you know, 
isn't something that would suit America, let alone the rest of the world. It's modern diplomacy, but not as we've known it. <laughs> Robert, thank you very much indeed. We will see. I've been getting away with it all my